Hello and Happy New Year! I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a traditionally published author and welcome to the <laughs> writing project update. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about all the projects that I finished working on in 2022 so you can get an update of what I did last year. Um, I'm also going to talk about the ongoing projects that I have that I'll still be working on this year in 2023. And then I will also talk about some new projects that I will be working on this year and kind of my goals and plans for what I want to do with my writing in 2023. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Um, there will be timestamps below if you want to jump around, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the projects that I completed in 2022. So these are finished. They're ready to go. They're in the can. Pretty much the only thing left is either they have already been released or they're about to be released. And I'm in kind of a marketing, publicity, promotion sort of phase. So the first book that I finished working on in 2022 is Blood Like Fate. Blood Like Fate is the sequel to Blood Like Magic. Um, it's about a family of black witches living in a near future Toronto. And in the first book, Voya has to make the impossible decision of either killing her first love or losing her family's magic forever. And in Blood Like Fate, she is dealing with the consequences of all the choices that she she made in the first book. So that's Blood Like Fate. This came out in 2022 in August. I can no longer remember the date, but it came out last year. And so I believe I still had to do some past pages on it. So past pages is kind of like your final look through of the book. So it's formatted in the way the book will be formatted. And you just go through and do your kind of final read through for any little tweaks. So I believe that I had to do that in 2022, like very early in the year. And so that's why I ended up considering it as like a project in that year because I did have to work on it some. Um, so yeah, but the book is here. It's in hardcover. It's out in the world. Um, <laughs> available to purchase wherever uh, books are sold in the US and Canada and through Book Depository internationally. I'll have links down below for all of my books that you're available that are available for purchase or pre-order. Um, so you can just check them, check them out in the description if you're interested. But yeah, I believe I just had to do past pages on this last year. But otherwise, it just came out and that was kind of the end of it is doing its own thing. I believe that this year a paperback will come out, but I haven't like checked in on it or anything. But I think unless I'm told otherwise, <laughs> the paperback will be coming out this year, um, which will be nice because then, you know, the Blood Like Magic paperback is already out and then the Blood Like Fate paperback will be out. And then, you know, the whole series will be available in both hardcover and paperback, which will be nice. So um, I'm looking forward to that whenever that happens. <laughs> I imagine we'll be in the summer, but again, I'm not 100% sure, but that is Blood Like Fate. The second book I finished writing in 2022 is Delicious Monsters. This is not the final copy. This is a sample dust jacket on a different book, but we're working with it. Um, so Delicious Monsters is a young adult psychological thriller slash horror about a girl named Daisy who can see ghosts that ends up moving to a mansion, not only haunted by the dead, but also by her mother's secrets. And then we're also following an investigation journalist who is trying to uncover the mystery of what happened to mother and daughter 10 years later. Here is the dog. You know, I asked her if she wanted to come into the room and she was like, no, I'm going to hang out on the couch. And the second I closed the door, bam, she wants to come into the room. Anyway, <laughs> that's Delicious Monsters and it's coming out February 28th of this year. So everything is done with that. So because it's coming out earlier in the year, I was finished with it last year. So past pages had already been handed in and is in its final form. Um, so that is Delicious Monsters. Um, and yeah, where we're at now is mostly just kind of all the marketing publicity stuff um, is going on. Um, most of the stuff that I have to like do has been organized, but I don't know how much I can say yet. <laughs> but if you follow me on Instagram, I have probably posted there about things that are happening. Um, that's kind of the best place to be if you want kind of more day to day updates about my stuff. Like 
that's where I put all my announcements of things that are happening. So if you want to see those, the best bet is to follow me on Instagram. I'm also at Lizelle Sambury there. So I probably posted stuff there, but as I'm filming this, I'm not sure. So I'm not saying anything. So that will be out. And there will also be an exclusive edition if you purchase through Indigo, which you'll get a bonus story, bonus chapter that I've put in there. Um, that's the only thing. I'm not sure if that bonus chapter is done as of yet when I'm filming this. I think I still have to do copy edits on it. Um, so I'm just waiting for that, but it will be ready in time for the book to come out. Um, so yeah, if you want access to that exclusive story, um, buy through Indigo. I will have buy links down below for all of that. So yeah, just kind of very much in the marketing phase of it. Um, and yeah, just kind of trying to put it out of my head. <laughs> at this point, but prepping for whatever, you know, publicity marketing things will come up. So that's Delicious Monsters. And the third and final book that I finished working on in 2022 was the He-Man book I was working on. Um, I don't know if we'll have a cover as of this time yet, but if there is a cover, I will flash it up on screen. Um, but this is the third book in the Tales of Eternia series that's based off of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Netflix series. It's a middle grade series. Um, so the first two books, uh, The Hunt for Moss Man and I Skeleton, tour were written by Gregory Moan. Um, and so these two books are already out. Um, this one came out in 2022, I Skeletor. And so um, the book that I wrote, Lost in the Void, which is following Tila, who is one of the masters of the universe. Uh, so that is coming out June 6th of this year. And so that'll be the third book. Um, and that is finished. Um, it was really exciting because I pretty much did everything in 2022. Like I pitched it, I wrote the draft, I revised, did. We did all our revisions with the editor and then I like finished up my final pass pages in like December and so it was just kind of like we're done. It, it was so good to like finish the complete process in one year. I'm, it's very exciting because I've never done that. It's usually kind of spanned over two years um, especially because I've been in summer before and this book is coming out in a summer season but it just worked out that way so that was really cool and I'm excited about having that come out. Um, I'll have links by pre-order links for it down below along with everything else but yeah it was a great experience it was really fun to have this as like my IP experience um and to learn so much about like the He-Man universe and all of that and yeah it was just good I am planning to I think I am maybe going to do a video like to talk all about the full IP experience at some point. I just don't know when. Um, but yeah, it was a really positive experience for me. So that's He-Man. Now I'm going to talk about the projects that I will continue to work on in 2023. So I started working on these in 2022 and I'm going to continue the process and hopefully finish working on them this year. So that is what I'm going to go ahead and talk about now. So the first project I'm going to talk about is Bear Hunt. So Bear Hunt is my 2024 YA horror that's coming out. We haven't solidified the pitch yet as in with my other books um but it is about a wealthy black family they own a needs-based school they also own a uh, cow calf farm and their matriarch so the leader of their family which is their mother she dies tragically in an accident and following her death a dead student shows up on campus. And then on top of that, uh, the main character, Sunny, her brother is implicated as the murderer um, because he's actually already on trial for murder and has been let out on bail. And she is trying to help him figure out who the real murderer is because he insists that it is not him and trying to kind of do that in secret to try and, you know, exonerate her brother but during the process some very strange things are happening in the house and some sort of creepy things about the family farm and her parents kind of history on that farm are coming to light and all of that is kind of powder kegging together um I think you can understand what I mean when I say the pitch is not solidified 
Um, but we are working on it. We are working on it. So, um, I guess we're in pretty early stages at this point. Um, so I just finished my first developmental edit. Well, not just finished, but I finished my first developmental edit on Bear Hunt. And so that's the stage that we're at right now. And I did a few changes in there. And that's also why this pitch is a bit jumbled because I don't know what's going to stick. But anyway, so that is Bear Hunt. <laughs> it's not going to be called Bear Hunt. We are still working on finding a new title and getting that all kind of nailed down. So that's still up in the air. Um, so yeah, that's kind of Bear Hunt. It's up in the air with the title, up in the air with the pitch. <laughs> And um, I've done one developmental edit on it, but I'm really excited about this book. There are a lot of things that I really like about it that I'm excited to share. Um, and yeah, I think it's a good one. I think it will be a good companion to Delicious Monsters because but it's a different kind of type of horror. It's a lot more um, kind of realism because, you know, Delicious Monster, she can see dead people. So there's already kind of a paranormal element to it right from the start. Whereas that's not really a thing in Bear Hunt. <laughs> like she's not a witch. She's not seeing the dead. It's none of that stuff. She's an ordinary girl. So um, yeah, I think that'll be interesting and fun. And so I'm working on that. Um, as I said, it'll be out in 2024. I don't know the date or anything like that yet. Again, we're still fairly early stages of the publishing process. So I'm going to continue to be working on that. And hopefully some way down the line, I will have a much better pitch for it. <laughs> So the next projects I'm going to be talking about are going to be short story anthology projects. So my short stories as part of that anthology. <laughs> um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is um, All These Sunken Souls, which is being edited by Cersei Moskowitz. Um, this is an anthology of horror stories by Black authors. And so I have done one of those short stories and I am still going to be working on that. So it's coming out August 15th of this year. So I will also have links for all of these pre-orders, um, if the pre-order links are available for them. Um, so that one I'm going to continue to work on. So, so far I've done one, one, no, I've done two. Did I do two? Yes, I've done two <laughs> developmental edits on it, though the last one was also kind of a little bit of a line edit. So I'm not sure if next I'll be doing more intense line edits or I'll be doing copy edits um, or what that will be, but I still have a few edits left on that project. So the short story that I have in that anthology is basically about a sleep sleepover gone wrong. It's very much about like intimate relationships between groups of like female friends um, and yeah and how those can become very toxic at times so that's what my short story is about and uh, that anthology comes out as I said August 15th and that's pretty much everything I have to do with that one and the next short story anthology that I have to work on this year so this is um I was like, I can't actually, say. this one isn't announced yet. Um, and I'm not sure if it's going to be announced by the time this video is out, so I won't say anything. Um, but I have worked on this short story in the past. So this is my middle grade sci-fi story um, about kind of, it's about a girl who is kind of at risk of having of losing her family's kind of like home farm and being pushed off to a different planet and it's about her trying to basically like save her little family space potato farm and it's very, very cute and I'm a big fan of it I really like it I really enjoyed working on it and so that one um I'm not sure about when this is gonna come out things like that I don't have like any solidified release dates as I said it's still unannounced as of now. Um, so this one, I have to work on my first set of developmental edits. I actually have to work at that this month. Um, it is due at the end of this month. So that's where I am in the process of that story. Um, uh, still pretty early days. So, but the draft, the first draft slash second draft, cause I edited it was sent off and I've got my comments back. Um, and I think they're like very good comments. I'm happy with them. Um, and so I just have to make those changes and get that sent back.
And the final project that I started in 2022 that I have to finish in 2023 um, is another unannounced anthology, <laughs> but I have also been working on this one. So this is the YA high fantasy romance one. And so I uh, got my completed, my completed draft and then I edited it and then I sent it off um and so that was actually like the due date for finishing that was actually is actually at the end of this month so I was early because I wanted to get it done last year um so that's kind of where I'm at with it um I don't have anything to do right now but I will have to do um developmental edits on it and line edits and copy edits and the whole shebang um and that one as well because it isn't announced yet I'm not sure when that's coming out. I believe they're also working on tweaking the title and things like that. Um, but I've gotten to know, I know who the contributors are now and things like that. So that is kind of on its merry way, chugging along <laughs> and at some point will be revealed. Oh, I totally almost forgot to, I forgot to say what the story was about. Um, so this is a fantasy romance one. I don't know if I talk specifically about what this is, but it's like, uh, it's, a uh, like a friends to lovers thing but it's kind of like friends to enemies to reluctant allies to lovers <laughs> to friends to lovers it's like that sort of thing um but it's a childhood friends sort of thing so um yeah that's how I've kind of <laughs> put it together those are the tropes and so it's essentially um you know a warrior boy who has become a warrior but he's not so good with his magic and it's his childhood friend who's kind of she's been spurned by him um and she's not really good at the warrior stuff but she has really strong magic and so they're kind of forced to team up together to help each other um because of the kind of impending storm that's going to hit their island and so during that process they're kind of working through what caused them to go from being childhood friends to like being enemies and like figuring that whole thing out so i will also at some point have a better pitch for that one <laughs> <laughs> but that is essentially what my short story is about, which again might change during the whole developmental process. Um, but that's the rough idea of it. And then finally, the projects on hold. So these are <laughs> projects that I started in 2022 that I decided I will not be working on in 2023. And so the project I am going to be talking about for that, it's actually just one, and it is a mastery of monsters. So this is the Dark Academia project that I drafted in 2022. Um, I worked on this basically the whole year, but at the end of the year, what I discovered about it is I need a lot more time to focus on it and to build it out because really what I created is I created a world that was so much bigger than I thought. And then the book that I wrote felt like it was so stripped thin of everything. So I'll talk what it's I'll talk about what it's about more generally. So it's a YA dark academia. So it's set at my alma mater, Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And it's about a girl who has recently lost her mother and then her uh, brother goes missing. And in order to try and find him, she kind of encounters this beast. And then she gets caught up in this boy who knows about the beast. And she thinks that has something to do with why her brother disappeared and they end up teaming up together to put her into this competition so that she can kind of have more access to information and can kind of find her brother so several things several things for one I also discovered I feel like this is a problem that I will have that I have with books is that I'll start working on books and because I'm working on them in like such different orders I will find that I'm working on a book and then I will realize later on that it seems too similar to something I'm already working on and so I think that's kind of also something that happened with A Mastery of Monsters is like the whole mother dying in the beginning felt very much like bear hunt and I was like oh I don't really want to do that again so I might change that but the big thing about it was just like I did all of this world building and all of this research and I did so many things 
to create this world and it's massive now and I just need so much more time to focus on it than I currently have and so I decided that I'm going to set it aside for 2023 and it's just because I already have projects that are like kind of in the works that I want to prioritize for 2023 and so I think it's better for me to push off a mastery of monsters to 2024 when I'll have a little bit more of that leeway to work on it so that's kind of my plan for it but I just the way things are currently looking and the way that I personally am like trying to manage my workload, I don't see myself having the time to work on it next year. But I might have time to do like little tweak things. I don't really know. But I think for now, my plan is to just put it on hold because there are things that I would rather focus on this year. And then next year, because a lot of the stuff I had ongoing will be finished then I'll have a lot more time to shift to a mastery of monsters because something that I'm really trying to do with my projects this year is I don't want to maximize all of my stuff um, I was talking about this in another video in my end of the year wrap-up video of how it felt like my workload was like this balloon and last year in 2022 I like inflated the balloon to its maximum and so it didn't burst so I wasn't burnt out but I like had no space for anything else and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have like a half inflated balloon so that I'm leaving myself space and so that is what I am trying to do. And so I don't want to squish in and be like, yeah, no, I can work on a Mastery of Monsters this year when I already have uh, other projects that I'm wanting to work on that would require drafting whole books. I don't want to get into a process of now having to rewrite or like rejig or whatever a Mastery of Monsters in the same year. And so I'm putting it on hold until 2024. And now for the new projects that I'm going to be working on in 2023, which I'm excited to talk about because it's new stuff and who doesn't like new stuff? And sorry in advance if you can hear my dog snoring or if you've been hearing the sort of construction-y sounds. <laughs> this is really, uh, wasn't a lot of ways to get around it. So I apologize for that if you can hear those um, and if I wasn't able to get those out in post. But, you know, life, life. Life. Anyway, we're talking new projects <laughs> that I'm working on. First, I'm going to start with what I've been calling the horror trio. So this is a trio of horror stories set in Toronto happening over 24 hours. And so I decided on writing these. So essentially, the whole background of this is a mastery of monsters, the dark academia I just talked about, was what I had hoped to present as my option to my publisher. So your option is basically like the next book that you're going to write and you present it to your publisher first as part of the option they get to kind of see and get like first dibs on what you have going on. They get to see it first and so I was originally going to present a mastery of monsters but then I got to that point where I realized I needed more time and the last thing I wanted to do was present and like create a proposal for a mastery of monsters which I had wanted to present a full published novel for not just a proposal <laughs> but anyway to present that and then if it's sold suddenly now I gotta I it's gotta be ready and like I need so much more time to work on this project and I didn't want to feel rushed and I didn't want to feel like anxious about it and like super pushed and like yeah I just didn't want to feel rushed and so I was like I don't want to present this as my option anymore I want to have more time to work on it long term and create something that I really want so when that happened I was like oh what am I going to present as my option then? And so I had had this idea for this horror trio at some point last year. And I was very like back of my mind getting very obsessed with it and like thinking about it all the time. And I was like, I'm just going to put together a proposal for this. So I 
am not a fan of presenting proposals because I just feel like people get a much better idea of my story when I write out the full thing. Um, and I felt like that happened with the bear hunt proposal. Like I felt like, uh, it, I don't know, it was just like more stressful. And I felt like it would have gone better if I'd had the full book, but it's just kind of a times thing at this point that it's just like it has to be a proposal so that is what I'm going to be working on this year um predominantly in January and February I'm going to be putting the proposal together so it'll be the first six chapters and a full synopsis for the first book in this series so oh they would also be a series of standalone so it's not like a continuing series they're each standalone books can stand absolutely on their own but I want to have an interconnected element between the three of them and so that's kind of my plan for that so but I have to put together that proposal for the first book and then I'm also going to put together like a little like pitch like a little pitch for the other two books that I have planned um so that's something that I have to put together. So I'm going to draft that and put that all together and get that all planned and ready. And then I will edit that with my agent. And then hopefully we'll be able to submit that to my publisher in early March. That's basically the plan. So it's going to come together <laughs> very quickly, but it doesn't take me a lot of time to work on proposals. I can do it really quickly because it's really just me plotting things um, and getting that all together and then you know the little drafting portion so I feel like it should take me the full month getting to work on it to get that all done so that is my plan for that and I think that will work well I'm hoping it works well I'm hoping my publisher is interested and buys it um, but that was basically how I pivoted because I really knew a mastery of monsters wasn't going to be ready for that and I didn't want to push it to be ready for that and kind of end up showing something subpar and then being rushed through the series when I know that if I set it aside and take more time I can produce something a lot better down the line so that is my plan so that's the horror trio that's the new project I'll be working on so I'll be doing that proposal and hopefully it'll sell and I will continue to work on that throughout the year and my final new project for 2023 is my adult horror project sorry if I didn't say that the horror trio is YA so it's a YA trio of horror stories but this is my adult horror project so this is what I'm going to be working on in 2023 and I'm calling it the couples retreat so the couples retreat <laughs> has been many things previously so this is my like is it my third or is it my fourth it might be my fourth attempt at an adult horror but if you don't know the whole adult adult horror saga I decided I wanted to write an adult horror novel and so I wrote one story and I called it six days and five nights um and I hated it <laughs> I hated it I hated it I was writing it I was like I I think I actually did finish it and I just, yeah, I did finish it. I finished it and I hated it. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand that book. Hated it. And so then I was like, I can't, I, I can't bring this to anything or anyone. I didn't see any way of fixing it. And so then I decided to try and rewrite it. And so I tried to rewrite Six Days and Five Nights. So Six Days and Five Nights, take two. I try to rewrite it. I start writing it. I still hate it. <laughs> so I don't hate it so much at this point. I just think it's not original and it's not good. And I don't like the concept anymore. So I decide I'm going to do a brand new horror novel. And this is The Newlyweds. So I plan The Newlyweds and I write it. <laughs> I write it extremely quickly. I write it and I really liked it. And I thought it was really, really good. And I loved the twists and everything. And so I worked on the newlyweds for a while. I had beta readers, etc. They really enjoyed it. And then I sent it to my agent. And my agent pointed out something that I kind of in the back of my mind been thinking about. And it was the fact that the twist that I had in the book kind of made everything not matter. <laughs> and it kind of made everything kind of unreal. And it 
kind of destroyed the stakes and I didn't know how to fix it. And so I decided I'm going to rewrite it. And that is the couple's retreat. And when I say rewrite it, I mean, I'm taking the same characters and some of the same uh, kind of conceits. So like there was a dual POV um, between a woman that was like experiencing something and someone who worked at the company that was providing the experience. And so I still am going to do that. Um, it's just a completely different kind of setting and set up and pitch in that way. Um, so that is what's going to be happening in the couple's retreat, but it's essentially a couple there. They've been together a very long time and she kind of wants to get married and he doesn't really want to get married. And she's kind of at this crossroads of we need to do something and we need to fix our relationship and I, we need to make it better. And so they decide to go to this couple's retreat and there's something very different about this retreat, which I won't get into because I actually, I don't know, it feels like something <laughs> that could be easily napped. So I'm going to keep it to myself. And essentially that's what happens. So they're at this retreat and things are kind of strange things are happening and we're getting the POV of her who is at the retreat to try and fix her relationship and someone who works at the retreat as an employee. So that is the couple's retreat. And so it is, yeah, I guess my fourth attempt at an adult horror. I'm hoping this time it'll work out. Um, I've once again um, applied for funding from the Canada Council for the Arts to work on this project because you can get grants to work on revisions of things. And it is kind of a completely different book, but still it's the same thing. You can. So I applied for that. I'll see if I get approved for it at the end of February, I believe is what I'll know or beginning of March, something like that. But regardless of whether or not I get funding for it, I am going to write this this year. So it's just kind of like, am I going to write it and get funding or am I gonna write it with no funding? <laughs> so it's just either or, but it's still gonna happen this year no matter what. And so I am going to be trying to get that book completed. I would like to have it submission ready by the end of the year. Um, so I don't just wanna like, finish a first draft at the end of the year. Like I want to have gone through rounds of edits with my agent so that in January, 2024, we can put it on submission. Um, and so that's the project that I want to focus on as a new project. And so that's why I'm not working on a mastery of monsters this year, because I want to focus on the couples retreat because I want to dig into that adult horror market. <laughs> it. And so I'd rather make my efforts with that now versus with a mastery of monsters, which is a young adult project. So if I sold the horror trio, which is also a young adult project, I wouldn't even get to publish a mastery of monsters for like three years. So to me, strategically and career wise, my time is better spent working on my adult horror now and seeing how that goes. And then next year when it's on submission, that's when I can go back to working on a mastery of monsters. And so those are really my goals for 2023 is I want to, for my writing projects is I want to complete everything that I have on contract. So I want to get all of that stuff done, of course, because I have those things on contract, but I also want to get that horror trio proposal ready for early March. So that's like a very early goal because I need it to be done in early March to kind of show to my publishers. And then otherwise, um, I would hope that my publisher buys it, but if they don't, then it has to go on wide sub. So kind of giving it that space. And then I also like to have a submission ready version of the couples retreat by the end of the year so that we can go on sub with it in 2024. So those are the overall goals of this year. So last year I created this tracker. So I'll show it on screen. I'm not going to show. So essentially what the tracker is showing is for each kind of project that I was working in that year, um, at the end of every month, I kind of did a little emoji to show how I felt ab about that project in that year. I mean, in that month. <laughs> And so I did a little emoji tracker there. So I'll pop it up on screen. I won't show which project for which just because it's like, it's a private thing and it's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of things involved. So I'm just going to show kind of the emojis. Um, but 
essentially this kind of became really more of an anxiety tracker because a lot of the time it was just I was feeling anxious about a project so that I was like sad about it but it wasn't anything to do with the project or anything going on with it it was just like I felt sad about it <laughs> because I was feeling anxious um and so but for me and why I'm showing this is I did actually find this to be helpful for me and kind of nice to look at because it was nice for me to see the way I felt about a project over the year and to see the different ups and downs because sometimes I'll think about a project and I'll be like oh my gosh I just felt anxious about this the whole time did I actually have times where I was like actually feeling good about this project and then I can look and be like yeah I did in this month I felt really good about it and it was totally fine and then I'll be like oh yeah I did do that and I did feel that way so I found it helpful for that. Um, I also find it interesting because it kind of showed me certain things about myself. Like there are some projects where I wasn't really working on them yet. And so it was very out of sight, out of mind. And so I'd feel very mad about it. And then I'd suddenly start working on it and get really excited. Um, I think there's also X's on one project because I hadn't started it at all. Like I hadn't been aware that it existed or something until later um but I just wanted to show it because it was something that I had done that I thought was like fun and helpful and like might be something that you might want to do with your own writing projects if you have those sorts of things going on it was just kind of something fun that I'll continue to do this year that like helped me see how I felt about projects and like see like which months were kind of hard for me and <laughs> which ones were better for me and looking back at that sort of thing um um, yeah, I just think it's good and it's helpful and it makes me feel a little bit better when I am thinking, having a hard time with a project currently. And then I can look at that and be like, oh yeah, right. Like I was so happy about this project like two months ago, like when I was like in plotting phase and let me try and like reconnect to the things that like made me really happy about this project now that I'm like struggling with my revisions and I feel sad this month. Um, so yeah, it was just something that I did for fun that I thought was helpful. So I thought I'd share it. And that's it for the project check-in or the project update. Um, hopefully this helped give you kind of an idea of what I'm working on and was like interesting to you in some way. Uh, if you have any questions about my projects, you can go ahead and you know, comment them below and I will answer to the best of my ability. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!